everybody. Uh, we are here at uh, Cinevino. My name is Stavrou Letkoska, and I'm the creator, writer, director, and one of the stars of Switch the Series, um, a fascinating new series based on a true story. And um, I'm excited today because we are being featured on Cinevino, first of all. But then I'm sitting here with my lovely executive producer, Eleni Jovas, and uh, Chris Yanakas, who is the owner of Ovelia, this beautiful restaurant that we're in, and which we used in episode four, if I'm not mistaken. Is it four? I think it's episode three or four, which means you're going to have to watch the series to see which episode it is. <laughs> so yes, I have Eleni, to watch it. Yes, you, you still oh have to watch it. Okay. It's baby steps. I, 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 I what, it was. It's a lot. It's a, it's lot. a lot. No, I'm in it. I, 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 yes. I got into the website. It's paid for. I just need to press play. Oh, excellent. We're very happy to hear that. We will take your money gladly. <laughs> but um, really Eleni good. is in that scene with us because she's with your also. Brother. Yeah, we sh so Ellen is also playing the uh, best friend Joanna, the best friend to my character Stella, and Ellen is the one who did the whole hookup with us filming here at Ovelia in Astoria. Oh, and since we're in Cinevino, we are opening. I was just gonna say, can I open? This yes, wine? let's okay. let's have some wine. So what what kind of wine so are we having? I don't. I felt like this is what we need to be drinking right now. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Dugos, and it's from uh, basically outside of Larissa, which. Is, which is actually my parts, um, and I've been to this winery with Dugos. It's a small family-owned generational uh -huh. uh, winery, and it's created with three indigenous grapes from Greece, and it's a gorgeous wine, this old vine, Terapsani. I had no idea. It's amazing. So where again in Larissa? Larissa, outside of Abelotipi. It's like oh. getting so to that's these like north. Words. It's central west coast, uh, no, central east coast Greece. The heartland. So maybe the next time we're doing an interview for Cinevino, we need to just take the whole crew to Greece, to Larissa, oh and maybe yeah. go around to the vineyards and yeah. try different wines, because the best wine comes from I'm sure from we Greece. can reach out to the guys here <laughs> to help us out with that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All Absolutely. right, well, I'm looking forward to tasting it. I've never had that one before, even though we've been Rapsani's at the restaurant a, really great a bunch wine of times. And they really know how to do it. Is it one of your most popular ones here? Uh, I would say so right now. Okay. Rapsani is like the Napa of... Uh, Greece and mm -hmm. drama is also like a some big big uh, uh, wine country as well as other parts but like the two main wine um, regions in Greece is drama and Rapsani. Nah. Nah, I knew that yeah no they not Rapsani really but I knew drama so my question is that what does this mean when people do that and they can tell if the wine is good or not like what are I'll tell you right now if yeah. they just want to know if the air got into the bottle and the wine is corked oh that's it you, you do don't the really need to yeah. The wine is not corked, it smells delicious, pour away. Excellent, okay, all right. And then are we supposed to just um, take the cork out and let it sit for a minute or two to breathe or no? We can serve it right away. Depending on the varietal, the depending on, the on how long it's been sitting okay. in a barrel, depending on the vintage, it depends on a lot of factors. Some wines are open and they need to be drank right away, mm -hmm. and some wines need time to breathe, and some wines, if you let them breathe it's too really much, beautiful wine. Yeah. if you let them breathe too much, they'll really die early. Bottle. Okay, so um, uh, we're gonna do this the Greek way, like we do it in the series. And instead of cheers, we will say Stiniamas. Stiniamas. Stiniamas to our health. Stiniamas to our health. Mm. Yeah, that's a way to start I love off it. the week. I love it. Yeah. We should be doing interviews with Cinevino more often. Every Monday, Just 12 o'clock. Just an excuse. Let's get smashed. Just an excuse to watch, uh, to drink wine and talk. Uh, so anyway, so uh, we're here to tell you about Switch the Series, and then um, which is available um, online, all eight episodes of season one. It's a scripted digital VOD series that I created based on my experiences as a former undercover professional dominatrix in New York City. Um, I will tell everyone who's going to be watching this, uh, we get uh, Switch is such a perfect title for the series because what we're asking of the audience pretty much is to just step into this world and explore it with us from a very psychological and emotional point of view to see what a dominatrix really does and what the clients who go into this world are really looking for, which is more than just, um, you know, a lot of people tend to think that this is a type of business that's like prostitution or it's illegal. 
a switch. It's exactly the opposite. It's a 100% legal business. It has nothing to do with sex people, because the people who come into this world, and that was so fascinating for me when I started doing my research, um, the people, mostly men, are looking for anything but sex. It's a much deeper psychological and emotional um, need that they're looking to fulfill. It's exactly now I feel like I need to watch it. Well, Chris. Chris. Like by the end of this interview, it's like. <laughs> will I find out more about myself? <laughs> yes, you will actually. Really? You will. Well, that's yeah. the thing when you approached me about uh, being part of this project, mm -hmm. which was a great, great gift for me. I, I was coming at it as a person who knows nothing about this world, just saw it as a bunch of latex and sexual deviancy mm -hmm. and some weird fetishes, and was like, okay, whatever that is. Yeah. Only through you and through the journey and learning more about it did I realize that it has a lot to do with the human condition mm -hmm. and that people need to like step back and take their judgment blinders off because um, I was thinking about this on the way he or she who does not spank let them be the first judge mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. in their intimate yeah. ways there's there's yeah, so like much um, levels to it that it doesn't have to go to that extreme like BDSM happens in intimate situations every single day whether people yeah. realize it or not yeah. Actually, so I have a question. Yes. I don't know, where did switch come from? Because I think it's a term that they so use switch, in the industry. No? Yeah, yeah, I'm glad you're asking this. So switch is a very popular term used. Uh, well, first of all, we use it every day. I'm watching phone commercials and car commercials. One of my closest friends used to call the word the switch. switch. <laughs> yeah. Because he changed his mind on the, on the phone. Exactly, exactly. So switch is a very popular BDSM term that has to do with the switch that happens between dominant and submissive during role play. I wanna be very clear that this is only between adults when you do it the right way, and I wanna be very clear that consent, 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 loud and clear is the most important thing that happens first before, that has to happen before any type of role play starts happening between, again, two adults, two individuals who come together and say, hey, Let's play, let's explore, let's do whatever we want to do. We don't want to come over with you in hashtags, In a safe right? environment. <laughs> what? Do we want new hashtags or no? Sure. Yeah, come up with, with one. 